pound, million and a half. Like about 16 altogether. I think that's about it there. With infinite care, the plans prepared at the outset are being executed, requiring two shifts. While the world and nature sleeps, the construction gangs are, as ever, occupied with their diverse and manifold jobs. Day and night, 12 months in the year, for two years, the work goes on unceasingly. November 1931. The early winter snows have come, but the work proceeds unhampered. With the changing of the season, every care has been taken to keep working conditions comfortable. Steam heat is furnished throughout the settlement. Powerhouse foundations have been completed. The great dam gradually mounts towards the sky. On the floor of the powerhouse may be seen the turbine forms, rapidly assuming shape. Although sub-zero weather has descended upon the countryside, there is no let up in the pace of the work. Even now, the huge proportions of the dam itself may be appreciated spanning the gorge like a magnificent fortress of old. Everywhere there is hustle and bustle. The bridge with its busy railway, the chutes bearing the concrete to various parts of the development. turbine form is being set. A few months later, February 1932, the gigantic dam was approximately 90% completed. A vivid idea of the rapid progress of the project is afforded in this panoramic view. Only 60 more feet and the dam will be finished. The web-like steel superstructure of the powerhouse rears itself against a transformed landscape. Assembled in the amazingly brief space of one month, over a thousand tons of steel constitute this structure. of the powerhouse superstructure, work is concentrated on the turbine casings. Men are assembling the speed rings and the massive steel scroll cases. There are five of these scroll cases, each weighing 150,000 pounds. This scroll case is 18 feet in diameter at the large end, tapering to eight feet at the small end. Out in the yards, the sections of the steel penstocks are being unloaded. Penstock sections being riveted. A weighty problem since they tip the scales at 20 tons apiece. And that conveys some idea of the problem to be faced in moving such large tubing job performed by the trusty gantry cranes. The powerful arm lowers the first section to its final resting place. And now it rests safely and soundly in its appointed position on the dam. In 
May 1932, the dam is being given the finishing touches and the tunnels continue to acquit themselves nobly. One of the most impressive phases of the installation is the placing of the floodgates sections. Not only impressive either, since each gate weighs 54 tons. There will be five floodgates to regulate the water level. And four of the gates are already completed and in position. Meanwhile, all the penstocks with a capacity of 10,000 second feet are in place. With only 2% more to go, the hoppers pour the remaining concrete onto the dam. And more concrete pouring is to be seen inside the powerhouse. The particular job at present is the concreting of scroll case number three. The scroll case must be completely embedded in concrete in order to ensure perfect rigidity. Here are being assembled the rotors for the generators, each rotor weighing 220 tons. Number four scroll case has been put in position. While the lining up of the bearings on number one generator demands the most minutely accurate work. Before the rotor is installed, the bearings have to be lined up within one thousandth of an inch. The penstocks are being covered by concrete slabs as protection against the elements. Very little work now remains to be done on the dam, while the tunnels are more than fulfilling their duty in taking the rushing waters of the Abitibi. Swollen by the spring rains, a heavy load is imposed on the two tunnels. But the labors of the tunnels has come to an end. On June the 12th, 1932, the first of the big gates is being lowered. On top of the portals may be seen two scows, which will rise with the water, automatically lifting the head frames built on them and thus salvaging the gate lowering equipment. One gate is now closed and work proceeds on the lowering and closing of the second gate. And so we take one final look at the Abitibi as it has been for countless ages. The gates down, the tunnels are as dry as the proverbial bone. Preparations are immediately made to seal up the tunnels with concrete. The tail race is dry, and so too is the spillway, but soon they'll be all wet. Clearing work on the tail race is going ahead quickly, since the river is rising speedily. Before the powerhouse, men are engaged in clearing away impeding rocks and obstacles in the tail race to take care of the water after it has done its work of turning the generators. The water creeps higher and higher, licking the face of the massive dam almost defiantly. Held back by the hand of man, the rushing Abitibi waters start to fill up the, the forebay. Up it goes, first at the rate of one foot per hour, then as it reaches the halfway mark, it moves up only six inches per hour. The slower rate is, of course, due to the ever-increasing area of the forebay. After 93 hours, the river finally reaches the edge of the spillway. Feelings are tense throughout the development as the river prepares to test man's ingenuity. In a moment or two, the water will be over the top. Let us take a mental leap back to view the changes which have been wrought. Once a peaceful river, winding its ribbon-like way through natural canyon walls, now stemmed by the hand of man. The water is backed up, and the river eventually takes on the appearance of a great lake. Then the canyon is no more.